Now that we've had an overview of our Dispatcher UI, let's take a look at the different features. Let's start with group calls. Here on the display, you first see a series of call cards, each representing a different pre-arranged group. To start a call with the Dispatcher, press on one of the cards, select the type of call you want to initiate, and open the channel. You can choose between MCPTT, MC Video, Normal Message, and Broadcast Message. Simply press the microphone button to speak. The Call Cards panel is also where you can manage emergencies. On the bottom left corner of each card is an emergency button. Press it to initiate an emergency PTT group call. The interface then changes to display only the emergency group and all other ongoing calls are dropped. We saw in a previous video that the Samsung solution is implemented with different levels of authority so that a supervisor or dispatcher is able to interrupt an ongoing call. From the dispatcher interface, when there is an ongoing call, the call card is highlighted. Here, the operator can press the hook button to steal the floor from any user or supervisor. Once the operator has the floor, a mic icon is displayed instead. Operators are constantly in and out of calls, and to ensure smooth operations, our dispatcher solution can participate in multiple call sessions simultaneously. For example, here the operator will initiate a video PTT call on group C and a voice PTT call on group D. The operator is able to freely participate in both channels, each on a different type of call. For additional convenience, the operator can attach groups to specific audio outputs, which are then relayed to different peripherals, speakers, or headsets. When the operator needs to make an announcement to users in the field, he or she can use the broadcast call feature. This is a one-way call from the control center to the field, which means only the operator can hold the floor. To initiate a broadcast call, the operator selects one or more groups and presses the broadcast button. There can also be situations where users from different groups need to communicate. To facilitate this, the operator can use the Group Patch feature. With this feature, the operator can create a temporary bridge between two or more groups. To do a Group Patch, select multiple active groups and press the Group Patch button. Location services is another set of key features for the dispatcher operator supporting MZPTX users. The operator can access location services by pressing the quick menu on the top right. A pop-up map appears that can be displayed on a separate screen. From the map, the operator can see the current location of all users. By selecting a user, the operator can access different options such as display the user's recent route or change location tracking settings. The operator can also create a geofence, which will pull all users in the area into a temporary group. A separate call card is created on the main interface from where the dispatcher can manage voice or video calls and view the list of members included in the geofence group. These members are automatically updated based on real-time location as they enter and exit the geofence. The operator can access additional features from the operations panel. Here, the operator can switch among different sub-panels for contacts, groups, messages, call history, other history, alarm, and presence. For example, from contacts, you can visualize individual authority rights and perform actions with a single contact, such as initiating voice or video PTT calls. The operator can also trigger ambient listening to listen in on a device in the field. From history, you can access recordings of recent audio and video calls. 
You can also check the present status of the users, whether they are online, offline, or have activated Do Not Disturb. This concludes the introduction of our MCPTX Dispatcher solution. Thank you for tuning in and don't hesitate to follow us. Links to our different accounts are in the description below.